Good afternoon, everyone. My name is April Fair, and I'm the Marketing Manager at Gotham Technology Group. I will be your host for today's session with Okta, and want to thank you all for joining us. On the webinar to walk you through today's content, from Okta, we have Ron Piovizan, Senior Director of Business Development, Matt Egan, Partner Solutions Architect, as well as Andrew Meyer, Gotham's Senior Director of Professional Services. Hopefully you've received your Domino's order and are settled in for our informative session. If not, please send me a private message. Before we begin, I want to review a few housekeeping items. To start, the webinar will run about 55 minutes and will include a formal Q&A session at the end. We will be recording the webinar in listen-only mode, which means you will, you will be muted for the entirety of the presentation to avoid outside interruptions. During this time, please input your questions into the Q&A box on the left side of your screen and press enter. Andrew, Ron, and Matt will address them all at the end. Thanks again for joining us, and Andrew, feel free to get started. All right. Thanks, April. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the latest installment of Gotham Security Webinar Series. We want to really thank everyone for taking the time today to join us and learn about this exciting set of solutions from our great partner, Okta. Uh, the security team here at Gotham is all in when it comes to identity and access management. Okta's identity cloud brings tremendous value, really, from a single source. Um, the challenges that Okta solves today with their suite of solutions have traditionally been addressed at our customers through a combination of patchwork technology implementations, maybe it's inconsistent application of policy and process, and really, in, in some cases, just really some soft, thoughtful prayer that only the right people hold the keys to the kingdom and can get access. So I'm sure many of you are responsible for provisioning, managing user accounts, and the wide range of privileges required for staff to accomplish those tasks every day. Uh, you're trying to provide single sign-on, mobility management, you're federating with different cloud providers, you know, all sorts of challenges. Uh, we want to help you take the guesswork out of those challenges and help you sleep better at night. And we believe Okta is the platform to do it. Uh, best of all, it's a cloud service that's flexible and cost effective. As you'll see in a moment, Okta's already got a wide footprint in the in industry. Some of the biggest names in business are buying into the solution and using it across their enterprises. Identity as a service is a solution that Okta created. I'm sure you'll see a connection to your own world and your particular challenges as we go through the presentation and demonstration today. Um, also, given Gotham's depth, depth of experience with Citrix Netscaler, we're going to spend a little time uh, highlighting the integration points with Okta and Netscaler. So without further ado, uh, please enjoy your pizza. Uh, pop questions into the queue as they occur to you, and we'll get to them at the end, and enjoy today's webinar. I'm going to hand it off now to Ron and Matt from Okta to take it from here. Great, thanks very much. Um, I just want to confirm, can can you guys see my screen? Yep, yeah. see it in here. We're in good shape. All right, great. Well, thanks everyone uh, for joining the webinar today. Really appreciate everyone's time. I can kind of uh, hear everyone munching happily on the pizza, so I, that's, a, that's a great bonus as well. And thanks very much to the Gotham team for this opportunity to chat with you. We're very excited about the work we do with Gotham, and we're certainly very excited about this um, integration that we're going to talk to you a little bit about today uh, uh, with what we do with Citrus, Citrix Netscaler. Um, again, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Ron Piavezan. I'm the Senior Director of Business Development here at Okta, and uh, Netscale, this Netscaler integration is one of the things where I spend a considerable amount of time, so I think it's a, I'm very excited to be talking about it with you today. So uh, just a quick agenda, we are going to, I'll, I'll give a quick uh, overview as to who and what Okta is and what our ecosystem is, talk a little bit about the, uh, the integration, not so much from uh, a technical perspective, but actually what, what problem we're solving, and I'm sure it's a problem that you've all, you're all currently experiencing, and, uh, and we think we have a pretty good solution, and we'll also go through a couple of case studies and, and use cases so you can understand better how this integration could actually be deployed, not just you know, the bits and bytes of what the integration is. And then my colleague Matt Egan will step in. He'll give you an integrate. He'll give you a demonstration, so you you can actually see how it all works. And uh, hopefully that will further illuminate um, what this work is we're we're doing for with uh, with Netscaler and uh, how it is relevant to uh, to you and and what you're doing with your environments. So just to get started, you know, what is Okta? Um, we are an identity as a service, and we practically created this category. 
So we take care, um, we're 100% cloud, cloud-based, and we take care of all aspects of your identity and identity management. And that can include anything from single sign-on for your end users. We have a directory. Um, you can do provisioning, so provisioning apps, who can, who can access an app, onboarding, offboarding. Um, and, uh, and if somebody has a unique permissions that, uh, that they're required in order to access a particular app. We have a whole suite of developer tools as well. Um, we have a developer SDK. Um, and um, and then we were also getting into other 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 aspects of, of identity management such as uh, API access management and and we are enterprise um, so we are built for um, for 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 enterprise use so because of that we put a, an enormous amount of effort into making sure that we have the most reliable and secure platform and here you can see some of our um, certifications and then, you know, where we work in highly regulated environments like the government or healthcare, we have those certifications as well. So we are very much committed to making sure the enterprise, uh, you know, of all sizes, uh, mid-market, you know, large enterprises, et cetera, uh, SMBs, but we're just really committed to making sure they have the easiest, most reliable, most secure way to manage their identities and their access management. And here's just, uh, a couple, a uh, few names that uh, you know of some of the partner of some of the customers we work with. So we really have been uh, tested in in the market. We've been around for about eight years, um, and you know we're in a fortunate position to be constantly growing. And thanks to some of the great names that you see here. And it's not just uh, you know it's, it, you know certainly being validated in, in the market by customers is is probably the one, single most important thing um, where we pride ourselves. But uh, it's also nice to see that we're uh, being recognized by uh, industry thought leaders as well. So with the uh, in Gartner, we've been in the leadership position in the Magic Quadrant for the past three years. Indeed, uh, identity as a service is practically a category we created. So we're you know we're very pleased to be uh, that that Gartner has recognized our efforts in this space. So really, when it comes to managing identity in the cloud. We are um, we do hold a pretty pretty strong position in the market, as demonstrated by both our customers as well as uh, organizations such as Gartner, and we have an enormous and what we're best known for, at least certainly on the, on the business development side, is what we call the Okta Application Network, where we are integrated with over 5,000 apps. So that means right out of the box, as you sign up for Okta, um, you are immediately integrated with all the top apps, all the top cloud apps um, anywhere. So Salesforce, Box, ServiceNow, Zendesk, et cetera, and 5,000 more. Those integrations um, for single sign-on and for provisioning come with Okta right out of the box. But, and, and this, you know, for many, for, um, for many organizations, this takes a lot of headache out of managing all those applications because, you know, some are, some applications now, especially with the, um, with the uh, spread of cloud apps, it's easier for organizations to adopt them. So sometimes they're being adopted at the team level. Sometimes they're being adopted at the IT level. Sometimes that maybe a, a business manager is adopting an app. And we help all of um, we help all, we help the IT organization manage all of those apps um, from an identity and provisioning perspective. But here's the problem, right? So that sounds great. And I'm going to pause for a second and I'll ask a question. And I know everyone's on mute, but I'm just going to assume everyone's raising their hands. But, uh, you know, the question is, so that sounds great, but you still have a lot of stuff on-prem. And are you, and the question I would ask is, are you experiencing a challenge managing your existing on-prem environment and your emerging cloud environment? Now everyone's eating pizza, and I'm sure everyone's like looking at each other and raising their hands. Because of course, this is an ongoing problem. Because a lot of applications just aren't in the cloud, right? Uh, you have SharePoint, you have uh, Oracle eBusiness, for example. And then a lot of the Citrix apps are still on-prem. So it's, it's increasingly becoming a challenge for, um, for IT administrators to be like, all right, I have all this stuff on-prem that, I still, that, that um, I still use. I have all these all this, um, new apps in the cloud that are offering all this great productivity for my end users. How, how do I manage that? How do I manage it securely? How do I do the provisioning? How do I make sure that somebody can have a single you know, view into logging into all these apps and don't have to remember you know, their AD credentials and then a different credential for a bunch of cloud apps and then a different authentication process for some on-prem apps. It, as, as I'm sure many of you are experiencing, it can get very complicated very, very quickly to manage this hybrid on-prem cloud IT environment. And this is very much what 
our NetScaler integration is about, is solving this particular pain point from many different perspectives. So, yeah, so here it is. So Okta, as I said, it's a cloud, it's a cloud service. Um, through Okta, you can gain access to, as I mentioned earlier, 5,000 um, very popular cloud apps. And now we have this integration with NetScaler where it's super simple to do, where NetScaler can do the, um, the, the, the protocol translation. And if you need to log into an on-prem SAML app, an on-prem header-based app, on-prem Kerberos app, which is you know, Microsoft, or any one of the Citrix apps, we make that very, very simple now. And on top of that, we also um, work with um, NetScaler to provide um, a multi-factor authentication solution. So if you want more than one factor to log in, we've got that covered too through this integration. So let me just go through a couple of, of, of use cases. And, and again, this, isn't, this is by no means meant to be exhaustive, but um, I want to go through a few use cases just so you can begin to understand how this can be used. So the first one is, is really simple. We, do, we, do, you know, we have a SAML integration with Netscaler. So if you have, a, um, if you have a, uh, an end user who is outside of the firewall, you know, they're, they're getting uh, increasingly used to accessing cloud apps on the go from a mobile device or their laptop or wherever they happen to be, and, they want to, and while they're accessing all their cloud apps, they also want to access uh, all their apps on-prem. That's, that's basically the core of this integration. So they can log into Okta. Okta will uh, seamlessly log them in via NetScaler into all the apps on-prem that they may want to use, regardless of where they are, uh, on, pre like, um, uh, on, the, on the corporate campus or more often than not, on the go. And again, uh, and we can't stress this enough, Okta prides itself on its security. So, um, um, so you know, things like intrusion detection, um, you know, uh, con being context aware of what the user's up to and how many times they've logged in, if they're doing anything irregular, you know, Okta tracks all that. So if, uh, as they are on, as the end user is on the go and if there seems any suspicious behavior, that's something that Okta is very, very much aware of. And there's also like just some, some very plain, really simple um, uh, IT, uh, IT benefits, IT management benefits, such as password re reset. You could do that, um, you could do that, the end user can do that on their own through Okta, so they don't have to alert an administrator if they've, for whatever reason, forgotten their password or their, pa or their password isn't working. So again, that's yet another benefit, in addition to the ease of accessing Okta from, uh, from the cloud, in addition to the you know, highly secure access that we provide, we also provide some nice um, uh, benefits for IT to, to basically alleviate some of the more uh, redundant tasks that they may have to do. And then this is an example again of, 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 of MFA. So there's many, many different options for MFA that we provide. So it could be through SMS, it could be through uh, voice calls. And this is increasingly getting uh, uh, you know, more, more important for, uh, for IT administrators because they want to make sure that they have that when somebody logs in, they have um, you know, multiple ways to ensure that the right person is logging in. And we have that integration with, uh, with NetScaler. And then there's even a, uh, and, and you know, we have dozens of customers using the, the, the first two, but we, there's, a, I found an interesting use case with a major hospital that's also using Okta for ID federation. So they have a bunch of end users who actually use different IDPs, and, and there's a, a kind of a series of reasons why they do this. You know, we'd love you to only use Okta, but we also understand that sometimes uh, other IDPs are used. And they actually ha use Okta to federate all those IDPs, so no matter what, um, identity management provider an end user is using, they can log in with the exact same way that they're used to. That would log them into Okta, Okta logs them into Netscaler, and then Netscaler would provide access to the, um, to the, uh, to the various apps. It is a couple of hops, but from the end user perspective, it's entirely seamless. So it's a great user experience, and it makes life a lot, uh, it makes life very easy. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to, to Matt to uh, walk us through what this, what this all looks like. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody, and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Can everybody see my screen and hear my voice? Screen looks great. All right, okay, all right. So uh, Ron, thanks for that transition and setup. 
Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Matt Egan, uh, Partner Solutions Technical Architect for Okta, and I'm going to walk through uh, a few slides before we drop into the demo. Uh, I'd like to talk about you know some of the things, some some potential limitations uh, you know that we have. Not that there are many, but there are some that exist. We want to make sure everybody is aware of those, and uh, and then we will move through a demo. So you know what can we do in this case? John's kind of he, he set up a, a great um, intro for us, uh, talking about the use cases that we cover. Um, and, and there's there's two protocols that we support uh, that, that that we have in there. The first one is Radius. So if you have um, an installation and you need to support, there's there's a few version constraints in here. Uh, so it's important to point out that we can support Radius flows. That is username and password based. Um, we can support multi-factor authentication in those flows, um, and it's there really more to to support uh, the the outliers. Uh, what we're really aiming at and, and what makes the, the use cases more flexible is our SAML integration. So for Citrix version 6.0 through 6.5, and then again in 7.9, um, Netscaler supports uh, SAML, and, and so we in turn have that support there. Um, we have uh, what we refer to as SWA, which is a, a simplified web authentication. Uh, it's, 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 um, it requires a plug-in from the Okta side, and it, uh, it, it's where Okta actually vaults credentials and, and, and types them into password forms. It's there, again, not, not, the, not the place that we're targeting, but I'm going to point it out. And then uh, something else Ron alluded to was uh, password reset. This is something we hear commonly from our customers, and that is the fact that you know in a Citrix installation, there is no good way for a customer to go through and do a password reset. And Okta has a product that kind of solves that. We'll, we'll see, not doesn't kind of solve it, it entirely solves it. Uh, and, and I'll walk through where that would come into play. So I'm gonna start with a, a high level overview of the architecture. There's two of them, one for Radius, one for SAML. So in Radius, um, what it looks like is, uh, you know, you, you'll have your Netscaler installation here and Netscaler will talk to an on-premise Okta Radius agent. So you would install a, a, a small Radius agent in there and uh, it's a it's a protocol translation where Netscaler can talk a protocol that it uh, you know is, is native to it Radius and uh, the Okta Radius agent in turn takes those Radius messages and passes these authentication requests back up to Okta in the cloud, figures out if it needs to perform a multi-factor authentication, and ultimately sends back a success or a failure, uh, at which point the authentication is going to proceed. And so this is a pretty simplified diagram of of what that architecture is going to look like. Uh, in the SAML setup, it's a it's a bit of a it's a more complex configuration, uh, but it's also a, a more capable configuration. And even though there's a lot of boxes in here, it's important to point out that the Okta installation, the Okta, Okta configuration in here, is very simple. Um, you know, generally in in both of these installations, actually we would have uh, an Active Directory agent that sits and synchronizes data, uh, profile user profile data from an Active Directory, and um, it's also used to perform delegated authentication. So if you've got users in the cloud, when they're typing their password into Okta, that's actually being delegated back into Active Directory. Uh, so the same AD agents there, uh, you know, to perform that. In some advanced use cases, it's important to point out that this Active Directory agent can actually be used to configure users. So that makes, uh, this could come into play in, in, a, in a B2C situation where maybe you had an external portal, um, a, a CRM, and you wanted from that CRM to be able to create users in an Active Directory environment to support this use case. Um, and this is, you know, it's a customer that you want to be able to demo a product that requires a, a Windows desktop. You don't want to have to ship CDs. Um, from your CRM, you can actually take through Okta, create those accounts, the shadow accounts that are required for Citrix to function. Uh, the passwords don't matter because it's SAML authentication in this flow. and the users are, you know, you're able to create those and manage those shadow users uh, required for Citrix to function through Okta. Um, so there's our there's our Citrix overview, and the the password magic comes in uh, where the Citrix storefront actually takes and processes the SAML assertion, exchanges it for a certificate. Um, so this does require uh, some Microsoft certificate uh, uh, PKI environment to be to be stood up. Um, in the landscape. So I'm going to drop into the demo at this point and, and walk through these two different use cases. So I'm going to walk through the Citrix, uh, sorry, the Radius use case first, um, and then we'll spend a little bit more time in, uh, in the SAML use case. So in the Radius use case, people are going to go to uh, their Citrix login like normal, 
And in here, I am typing in my Active Directory credentials, if I can remember them. And I have things configured in this environment, so it's actually going to challenge me for multi-factor authentication right now. Um, and so our Radius agent uh, does a challenge, and I have a couple different options. I've got multiple factors that are enrolled. Um, I have our OctaVerify, which is a phone-based um, one-time password generator, time-based uh, one-time password generator. Um, I also have OctaVerify, which would uh, trigger a push notification to go to my phone where I've got to accept it, or uh, I could do SMS authentication. So in here, uh, because I have multiple uh, devices enrolled, it's going to challenge me to, to say which one do you want to do first. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do OctaVerify. So I have to tell it I'm doing uh, OctaVerify. And then I'm going to open up the app on my phone and retrieve my one-time code. If it will accept my fingerprint. Okay, this is a good uh, this is a good time. Wow, my phone. I guess my finger's sweaty. It's uh, it's not letting me <clears throat> me proceed there. So I'm going to move to SMS because. Uh, well, we're we're in a we're in a demo, so I'm going to actually abort this. This is this is a nice thing to point out here. It, it, at some point, if you enter into this uh, radius-based uh, authentication flow and you need to, you know, go back, you don't have your phone with you, you didn't get the SMS message, whatever it is, uh, you just press zero to to step back, and it's going to now ask me uh, for a different device. I don't need to, you know, cancel and, and go back out. So we're going to go SMS. At which point, I'm going to get a text message on my phone, and I did and I can type in the code that came in on my phone. So as much as that was not scripted, uh, kind of a cool opportunity to explain uh, how the uh, Okta radius flows work uh, when multi-factor authentication is there. So you know, here, here, here we are, nothing special, Citrix storefront with my various apps or potentially desktops that are available to me, um, and, and these are going to launch. So I'm, I'm not even going to bother launching the apps because that's not, uh, that's not what we're here for. That is the radius flow. Now I'm going to shift gears and talk about uh, the, the more interesting story, and that is uh, the SAML one. And before I jump into the user story, sorry, the the user story on that, I want to talk about um, the admin story for a minute. So within Okta, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, um, we have uh, integrations that that we'll talk back to directories. So in here you've got an Active Directory agent that is configured to talk to our sample directory. Um, lots of different configuration options in there, but at the end of the day this is set up so that it's imported users from this Active Directory. Um, you can run with multiple agents. In fact, I've got an agent that's offline, uh, so we report, so we support, uh, you know, have, have the ability to, to deal with the resiliency and, and load balancing in that regard. You can have multiple agents configured. Uh, the agent installations are, are very simple. Um, and then you've got, uh, you know, import rules and import mappings that, that go along with that. Um, to support the security thing, some of the stuff that we saw earlier is uh, multi-factor authentication. We can write relatively complex rules in here uh, to figure out who's going to get multi-factor authentication from what location, from which application. So at this point, you know, in, in here I've got a rule that says, hey, people that are in this Citrix MFA uh, that are authenticating through Citrix, they have to go through and they have to perform uh, multi-factor authentication, the frequency, how long the session lifetime is, right? So Okta's got a very robust and uh, configurable policy engine uh, that supports that. And then when it comes to the applications, Ron alluded to it, Ron talked to it, we've got uh, an, an Okta application network of 5,000 and growing integrations. And with each one of these applications, I'm going to go the, to the core Citrix SAML configuration. Um, you can also do per app multi-factor authentication uh, settings. So we, here, here is the core SAML integration for Citrix that's configured, and it has its own sign-on policy. And this sign-on policy uh, right now is selectively looking for, again, users that are in that Citrix MFA group, and it's going to require multi-factor authentication every time. There's your admin dashboard view of, um, of, of the Citrix integration uh, for Okta. So now onto the, to the user side of this. Um, you know, what we see pretty commonly is, uh, you know, this is, this is how a user starts their day when they're an Okta customer. 
So again, the same credentials that I used that I was just typing into Citrix, but we're shining into Okta. And there's no multi-factor authentication just to get in here, right? So I'm I'm signed in. I've got access to these applications. Uh, from a from a user perspective, users have the ability to to organize their their personalized uh, desktop, and uh, I've done so, and I've moved my Citrix specific applications into a Citrix tab. Um, when I launch this, I'm gonna we're gonna go right into Citrix NetScaler. Uh, and what you'll see is I'm not going to get prompted for uh, multi-factor authentication. So the, the UI in this experience is, is greatly enriched. There's no more um, having to figure out what number I need to push. That's a limitation of the RADIUS protocol where we've got a rich UI. We're able to um, provide a, a, a better experience here. So um, here I'm going to trigger a push notification. We're going to try this again, uh, proof that I may not be the smartest guy in the room at this point. Uh, so I'm going to go out to verify. I've got a push notification on my phone. And this time it accepted it. So <clears throat> we should see a success, uh, success here in a moment. So the push notification comes to my phone. There's actually a, uh, a key pair that's been exchanged when the phone is enrolled. So, that, so I get the push notification. When I accept it, it's actually signing a message, sending it back to Okta. So it's a very robust, out-of-band, multi-factor authentication protocol. Uh, to, to do those push notifications. So you see that I'm in I'm into Citrix. I've I've never typed my password. I've not typed my password in yet. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this all the way in. We're gonna go and launch a desktop at this point. And that kind of that, that flipped through pretty quickly. But you'll see that I'm signed into a Windows desktop, having never once uh, provided my password to Citrix storefront. So or to Citrix at all. Um, and, and the reason that works seamlessly is because of the certificate-based um, authentication that's taking place in there. Uh, so Okta sent a SAML assertion to Citrix Netscaler. Netscaler sent it through the storefront. Storefront exchanged that, uh, that SAML assertion for a certificate that it was used to sign me into this desktop. Um, again, not everybody wants to... Uh, to sign in and get a full-blown desktop. So one of the things that we've done in our Okta portal is uh, we've, we've taken an extended um, deep links, deeply embedded bookmarks that are going to take me right to an app. So I could launch one of these apps, Calculator, Notepad, Paint, um, highly used business applications. Uh, I could launch one of those directly from my, from my dashboard. Um, and, and these are just simple, show you the admin side of this, these are just bookmarks that are going right to uh, a deep link. So the, these, these apps are really just shared bookmarks that we have in here. Um, and so you can see I have just this long uh, URL to get directly to one of those uh, to launch the app, which will go in and, and perform the same authentication and, and ultimately just launch paint. Oh, on the wrong screen. Uh, all of that, all of that testing for that to launch on the, on the wrong screen. So, you know, here we have uh, paint that I can interact with and, and, uh, you know, do all of the, important paint operations that I require on a daily basis. Um, you know, the, the fact that I'm demonstrating with paint, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't lose any of the ability, you know, lose any of the message there that, you know, the point is you could um, provide to a customer um, or a partner uh, or an employee the ability to interact with, uh, you know, a, a, a thick, legacy client uh, without having to challenge them for a username and a password or without having to challenge them with yet another username and a password, or more importantly, to do it securely um, with multi-factor authentication outside of a VPN. Uh, that, that, that's a big constraint that we hear. You know, a lot of people, uh, application services have moved out into, um, you know, SaaS, but they're still having to VPN in to, to, get, a, to get a hold of their legacy applications. Close that. 
no, no, I don't want to save it. All right. <clears throat> so there's our, you know, there's our demo. There's um, some additional, you know, configurations. As you look at these policies, I want to make sure that everybody's aware of the granularity that can come along with this when we're going through that SAML flow. I think I, I kind of flew past this uh, without diving in uh, deep enough. So in these policies, when I'm writing an authentication policy, I can, I can pivot this step up authentication based off of a variety of things. Um, so we'll go in and, and modify one of these policies so you can see the options. So I could do it specifically to um, users. I can do it based off of group membership. These can be Okta groups. These can be groups that are coming in from Active Directory um, or other applications we support. Um, various uh, various masters, uh, you know, whether it be a Workday or an HR as a master, or whether it's Active Directory or, or a different repository, these groups can be sourced from, from anywhere or, or groups that are mastered in Okta themselves. We can do it based off of location, uh, whether that's a zone or a specific network that you're trusting, uh, that you're defining, uh, if you know that they're coming from your office location, your, your internet egress IP address, it could be registered. And, uh, and then you get to write these policies where, um, you know, you can prompt them to put in their username and password again. Uh, you can require multi-factor authentication, or you can just flat out uh, deny access to it. So you could write, uh, you know, relatively complex combinations of policies there to support uh, your specific business needs. Um, you know, and, and with that, We'll flip back over to this slide. I am hoping we've got a bunch of questions because this integration is simple enough that it's really tough to fill, uh, you know, much more than 20 minutes with a demo. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. That was great. We have a few questions that came in. Um, one is, if we put the MFA on the front page of Okta, can it pass through to the Citrix without doing it twice? We have two-factor on the front page and now want to make it seamless to access the check. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, great question. Um, so, you know, so sorry, I meant to hit escape, not advance. Uh, so, you know, what that would look like, I've just written this policy uh, so that my actual sign-in to Okta is um, not requiring multi-factor authentication. So if we go look at my security policies here, so you could just as easily change this. In fact, I'll, I'll do it on the fly just to demonstrate it. Um, so my, let's see, my default policy. So I need to, I would add a sign-in policy here. So yes, absolutely, MFA Matt. Um, and we're going to assign it to this Citrix MFA group. And we're going to create a rule in there that says MFA always. And regardless of where I'm at, we're going to prompt for a factor. OK, so now my initial login to Okta is going to require multi-factor authentication. And, and I can go now to the application policy that I'd written and remove it. So you know, the, the answer is yes. And I'll, I'll continue to, to demonstrate this in the background. Um, Hopefully that, that answers the question. Hopefully I hit the mark on that. <clears throat> yeah, um, this is Ron chiming in. So yeah, so Matt, so uh, as Matt was highlighting, um, you can you can harmonize the, the two MFA policies. So all you need to do is if you just want to do it once, when somebody logs into Okta, you can, you know, as Matt's demonstrating, you can set that policy and then that user will not be um, challenged again with MFA once they successfully pass the, uh, the Okta MFA. And to prove the point, oh, Matt wrote the rule wrong. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. going to blame that on the on the fact that it was a uh, get on the fly. So, but what you'll see here, I know for sure that I took the uh, the policy off of Citrix. So you can you can definitely change that. Shift the multi factor prompt a, a, around. Um, I, I did the per app just to kind of demonstrate the flexibility there. And the per app is is actually that that's that's an important point too that, that Matt raises because some apps 
or some um, resources are going to be more sensitive than others. And sometimes you want to have, you know, uh, sometimes you, you, you're okay with somebody just authenticating into, into an application. Sometimes you want to add maybe one or two MFA challenges, again, depending on the sensitivity sensitivity of the app or of the resource that the, the user is attempting to, to access. And we allow for that, that type of flexibility. So in the, um, in the hospital case that I highlighted earlier where uh, Octa was doing the, the IDP federation, obviously there, you know, some apps are, are horizontal and anybody can access them. Some of them have very sensitive um, patient information and there you want to have multiple factors. So whether it's you want to do it twice because you're, you know, very Secure, security conscious, or you just want to do it once per the, the question, we have that flexibility to set up that policy for what, you know, however you think is appropriate. And that is well within the, uh, the integration that we have with NetScaler. Yep. Ron, in that, this is uh, my note. I forgot to, I forgot to carry this. This was something I, I, I talked about and then didn't actually demonstrate. And that is the password reset. So um, one of the use cases that we see in here from our customers is the is the fact that within Citrix you don't have a, a good way to perform a password reset. So again, depending on um, what the the various use cases are, uh, what we have done is uh, you can actually embed an Okta password reset link, and we didn't have it in this in this uh, in this environment. But what you do is you'll actually embed a link to our password reset flow, uh, which is just this thing. And so from the NetScaler gateway, because this is all backed by the same uh, Active Directory instance that Okta is working off of, you send somebody through the forgot password flow and you leverage our capabilities. So in this one, I'll, I'll show you how ours works. And this works if you're Okta mastered, uh, well, you have to be Active Directory. You can have Active Directory in here. This is Okta actually resetting an Active Directory password uh, for a user that's forgot. So um, we'll go through and reset my password. Uh, using SMS, so I, I've got an enrolled device there. I'm going to get a text message from Okta in the same way I would during MFA with my verification code. Uh, answer my security question here. Whoa. And now I can set up a new password. Um, really more relevant for the radius uh, flows where the password is, is uh, you know, known to the user. Uh, no, I don't want you to do that. Um, but, you know, there, there you see that I've gone through, changed my password. I could reuse that same password. Uh, you know, that, that, that password reset flow is available. So, sorry for skipping over that. Okay, Matt, what about unlocking a password after it's locked out? That same flow, that same flow will unlock a password. So if, uh, uh, let's see, let's see how long, um, do I dare do this? Yeah, yeah, so that, that very same flow will do a password unlock. So it, it will both reset and unlock a user. So we can probably lock me out. I forget what the policy is on this org, um, but I'm not afraid to, not afraid to try. Actually, I'm gonna look at the policy. And Okta has a feature that we actually we, we call soft lock too. So we can um, instead of passing multiple failures through to Active Directory that would cause an Active Directory lockout, we'll actually soft lock that um, lock the Okta account out if, if all of these failures are coming through the Okta conduit, and we'll we'll just uh, keep that lock there. Um, but regardless of that feature, that same self service flow is is good for a password reset and a password unlock. Um, there we go. Matt, will the user get a prompt that the password is going to expire in X amount of days? Yes. So if uh, if a password is about to expire, Okta is going to um, inject that flow. The radius flow doesn't have a password reset, uh, but if it's coming through Okta, if I'm signing in through Okta and my password was about to expire, it's going to notify me. If my password is expired, it's going to notify me. Um, and so that's actually when you go through uh, there's a couple password recovery options, but but the the reset and the expired passwords are are fully honored. And so if I'm changing my password on my own, um, I can show you a, a password uh, change. But it's it uses it calls the same uh, native Active Directory functions to uh, change a password on behalf of the user. And so it's not an admin 
uh, updating a pass, changing a password, it's a user updating a password on their behalf, and those those use cases are there and supported. Great. And do you support F5 and F5 APM? Yes, we do. Um, that's that's another. Uh, recent uh, integration that we've been working on is, is getting that fully documented. So with uh, with F5, I forget what their minimum version is, but they support SAML in the APM, um, and you can do similar uh, Kerberos constrained delegation uh, or, or different um, authentication manipulations there within the F5. Okay, one more question. Can we exclude MFA if users are inside network? Yes, so you're you're getting um, yes, absolutely right. So we can we can write those policies in there and say, hey, if if uh, so, what you'd have to do is register your known networks, the egress IP addresses of of them, or have a proxy that is uh, that's capable of inserting a, a, an X forwarded four header, which is common for proxies. Um, and so if you you can write those rules and you can exclude clients that are coming from those known IP ranges, whether it's the internet facing IP address for your offices, you can go in and register those, or uh, if you've got a proxy that supports the X forwarded four, will honor the X forwarded four header IP address if it's coming from a known registered gateway, um, and then you can write even more granular policies to, to uh, include internal IP addresses, so those, those rule sets are there and available. Perfect. I think that is it for all of the questions. Matt, did you want to give the audience some details about the OctaForum? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, so for people that are you know, interested in, in learning and hearing a little bit more, um, we have uh, an awesome event that's actually near you guys coming up on May 4th, and that is the OctaForum. Uh, so at the OctaForum, uh, hundreds of IT leaders, uh, a full interactive day of learning how the cloud fosters innovation for your business or organization. Uh, Octa's product leaders will showcase Octa's integrated identity, uh, mobility, and security products. Um, and forward-thinking IT leaders will share their experiences with respect to impl implementing best-of-breed technology. And that is Thursday, May 4th, uh, 2017, from 12.30 to 7 p.m. at the Time Center in New York City. Uh, so there's a keynote, uh, six sessions, and a cocktail reception, most importantly. And you'll have uh, uh, access to Okta experts and executives there. So if, if, if there's anything in here that's struck a note and you're looking to get more details, uh, you know, the Okta forum, uh, or of course, we're going to encourage you guys to, to reach out to Gotham to, to figure out what to do next. That's great, and we will be sure to send out the registration link for that Octa Forum to everyone that's on the webinar today. Um, thanks again to our presenters and to everyone who joined us. Uh, just a reminder that this was recorded, so the content will be available to anyone who's interested. If there are no further questions at this time, I want to wish everyone a great afternoon, and I hope you enjoyed your pizza. Great. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for the Gotham team for this opportunity. <laughs>